can't tell you how many times I've done that. All right, I have good news for all of you. So make sure you have that take home test done. I'm grading through them, and people are doing quite well for the most part. Only a couple people have given me the wrong format for short answer questions. You are not Western Civ, just so you know. Oh. My Western Sis class had a great time learning about Napoleon the other day. Napoleon, so you can't Napoleon die on time. No, I gave you that stuff for the World War II jacket. Are you working on that? Okay, good. Very good. And. So this is not 25. You might notice my five sometimes looks like an eight. <laughs> and what you're supposed to do is. <laughs> Yours are all online. Uh, at a time. That's a new time here. Else would be the same. Other than that, no. He totally fooled you. I feel like I'm missing a few people here. What happened to Hacker? What? Play? I was fouled. Yeah. Um, what happened to Hacker? They want to reboot. It's like, I don't know what happened, but it's, I'm missing some. I might have to do this another day. Some of you, I'm still missing this from you. That's a pretty good throw. <laughs> yeah, I have more. All right, I'm gonna I thought it was funny. I think I got two classes to take six. I know I saw Adam's in here, but I'll tell you. Now I have Tyler's. Raising the ideas. I got it. I don't have yours. I always sit down. Well, that one's out of 40. And I don't know where I have some other ones, but I seem to have sat in some <laughs> I don't know what the heck happened to this. I've all mixed up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get your notes out. Well, play. 
Which one doesn't have a name on it? This looks familiar to me, buddy. I think that one's like similar. I think it's five grand. Oh, never mind. If you like to get yours, I'll leave this one up for a lot of naming. Check it out your Sound good? All right. So let's go ahead then and a couple of things that take home test will be due then again uh, uh, today. Uh, look online. I am going to assign something from the new review book, probably to. Didn't I say this already? We transcribe it again. Yeah, rewrite the new, rewrite the review book without the letter E. <laughs> so no vowel bill, right? Yeah, yeah no. Vowel. Make it easy. It'll, it'll literally be like like six multiple choice questions, just a few multiple choice questions. But it, but there'll be multiple choice questions from the Revolutionary War. Cool. That chapter one. So I'm going to start reviewing. Remember, the key is on the front page of my my web page. You can click check the whole book and have a bunch of stuff in it. So you just whatever easy. But obviously, do will tell you to get used to the questions. We'll start getting used to it. And other than that, let's go ahead and finish up fascism. That's a weird way to put it. <laughs> it's not fascist. Day. So with that, did we get to this? Yeah. Yes. So we got to that. By the way, that is a pretty amazing. What's that? The only thing I can understand is cost is that divine. Ten. So, do we talk about? We, so we talk about this. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got to it. Yeah, right to here. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's so creepy to see that, but you know, it just it was the Bellamy salute. It was just a, a guess. So if you ever see you know, like bad movies where Romans do this, and no, that didn't yet. Yes. Have they just a five flag? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I might not be sharing my screen. Thank you. Good eye. I think I just got a frantic message from somebody. You're not sharing the screen. <laughs> Thank you for noticing that. Okay, so got Mussolini, you know, that's the basic element of that, how that all started. And by the way, I've got a couple people taking a little peek at their phone. I can't even begin to tell you how much that annoys me. I know I went and I was looking for something, but if it's a temptation, I'd put it away or I'll put it away for you. And you don't want to catch that while I'm actually doing something because I get incredibly mad. I take great personal offense. I consider that an insult to me. And so, you know, I know you you know that. It also depends on my mood. Right now I'm in a good mood, but I am talking about fascists and Nazis. And that does put me in a foul mood. So with that, so in 22, some would see good power. He really didn't have an ideology. Said it was just more of this veterans who are angry. And in 1922, they took advantage of the weak, dislocated government that was upset about uh, being kicked out of Versailles, a number of different things, but also the fear of the Communist Party that was growing in the Italian parliament. They marched on Rome, they made a big deal. Thousands of fascists are marching. Well, there actually weren't very many, as you can see from this picture right here. But the king who distrusted democracy anyways just gave Mussolini power. Here he is on the march with his black shirt. I'll explain in one second. But he really didn't have a plan. Was he? Did he just want to be part of the government and have a lot of mistresses? Appears to be his only. But they gave him power, and in 1925 he took over power as dictator. It was not unconstitutional to the very weird constitutional monarchy that Italy had. By the way, that is the flag of the Italian of uh, the Italian monarchy, and then they would eventually. They would eventually change that to uh, the fascist symbol. Remember the fasc with the axe. I showed you that yesterday, right? His followers were called the black shirts. And they're mostly World War, World War One vets. And Mussolini cleverly played on the fear of the very wealthy, fearful of the socialists. They funded him. So here are a couple more pictures of the march on Rome. 
And remember the bonus army? And then the uh, the Wall Street push while they talk about using the using the bonus army to march on Washington, they were using it as an example of Mussolini. And this was happening all over Europe. Armed group, paramilitary, in uniform, marching and fighting each other. Street fighting was like the norm of the 20s and 30s. But you think of all the veterans, but you'll see this in Germany, in Britain, in France, and Italy. And uh, the United States had their supposedly racist gesture. Uh, the bonus army just did it on their own, but that was the inspiration for the Wall Street push to use the bonus army. Does that make sense? You know, the bonus army is just these are poor, starving people who are desperate. But then wealthy said, "Ooh, we can use that like Mussolini did." So the philosophy will come over the years. Mussolini was very intelligent, not very focused. And because he was intelligent, does not mean he made correct decisions. He blundered and made foolish moves and did a lot of really dumb things. But he was smart. You know, Hitler was no was not brilliant, he made really mo smart moves, but like Hitler and Mussolini, they're incredibly audacious. You know, they just would do stuff and they just shocked people. By the way, just doing stuff sometimes will get things done. It's amazing how much just being audacious it shocks people. So, fascist ideology. And the number one thing, they really pushed this idea that Italy was humiliated. So we will bring back strength. And they really pushed this idea of how manly is. There's gonna be a lot of very manly-like pictures of the man. So this is a masculine movement. This is not a movement for women. Only role women have are to be subsidiary to men. Or women who act like men whatever that might mean, in the manly form that is. And it's very social Darwinism. The idea that certain people, races, ethnic groups are supposed to be on top. So men are supposed to be on top, and some men are superior, and only one man should be on top, but also some ethnic groups, nationalities, and nations, they are superior and they should be on top, and of course that gets to race. Some races are inferior, some races are superior. And this is social Darwinism taken to its absolute extreme. As I've said before, social Darwinism is still a very dominant philosophy. But most, most people, I would say fortunately, do not take it to this extreme. And it's one of the reasons why people, uh, social Darwinism, that term has gone out of favor. When you're associated with fascists and Nazis, people like to, they tend to back away. Another one. Another good note. Another thing, they're very anti-liberal. Liberal ideas, they saw that as weakness. Liberal ideas make you weak. For example, individual rights, this idea that we all have rights. If we're all fighting for rights, that means we're a bunch of individuals, and that makes the state weak. And smarter, superior enemies will take advantage of your weakness. Not Mussolini, but you, because you're weak. I will provide you strength, follow me. Who's with me? Okay, we got two, that's enough for me. You gotta start somewhere, right? Also, democracy, if the people decide their leaders will be, because weak people like you, will be influenced by stronger ones who take advantage and destroy the state. So democracy and rights make you weak. And constitution, raw law? No, no. Okay, let me rephrase that. Laws are fine for you. For the, for the regular people can do what I say, but an actual written law, those are for other people. Those are for the suckers. I, as your leader, don't follow the law. The law don't apply to me. Only soccer follow the law. Only the weak. Now you might say, wait a second, you can all do what we want. No. You do what I say. And it really has this concept of laws are only used, are only used to weaken. 
Now remember, this is authoritarian, so authoritarian, I decide. That's how I immediately put myself in charge. It's so nice. <laughs> Write that down. I am in charge. So, but the big elements are what makes the big fear is they're anti-communist, anti-socialist. I know communism is technically a form of socialism, but communism is a little different because there is now a massive state that calls itself communist. In fact, there is a flag, the only flag that existed in 1925. That's their flag, the Soviet Union. But they're also intensely anti-union. So here's the fascists sweeping away. Here is uh, the Bolsheviks. They also feared Masons. They feared Masons weren't uh, actually loyal to the state. The Masonic Lodge, which is still very big in Europe, is declining in the United States. And labor unions. So what elements do we need to know? They're hyper-nationalist. Hyper-nationalist. It is all for Italy. Don't forget, somebody's got to represent Italy in the proper way. That's why we will make Italy great like Rome was and make the Mediterranean an Italian sea. And so that is why they push this idea of imperialism. We must spread our fly and empire. So Italy's going to be looking for places in the Mediterranean they could conquer. For example, they still wanted this coast. Back in 1939, they would invade Albania or Albania. And in, back in 1896, Italy lost to Ethiopia. They tried to conquer Ethiopia and survive. They're eyeing Ethiopia. You remember the gathering storm in 36, 35, 36, they would invade. By the way, here's once again Mussolini, Trajan's column. So that's in the form of uh, the Colosseum, to get my bearings right, would be right about here. And indoctrinating little kids. We're in school, that's what we're going to be taught. Huh? It's yeah. Oh, yeah. But they're 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 probably told. Got it. But you know, teach them early. So, and then intense military, the glorification of the war. So here is you know Italian troops, colonial troops. And lots of Mussolini in uniform marching past troops. Now, I go over by the military. This was more to show the Italian military uh, was still is so disjointed. And one thing about because of the North and South Italy didn't quite get along, and the officer corps was pretty weak. In a fascist state, officers a lot of times are chosen by loyalty and not competence. So they get really incompetent officers. You see the same thing in Nazi Germany, uh, especially by the end of the war. But also, one thing about military, it would dovetail. It would dovetail into masculinity, manliness. By the way, it's not the glorification of the warrior like we must care for it. It's more the ideal warrior who will fight and die for the state. Unquestioning service of the state. It is certainly not that, that we, we love the individual who become soldiers and care for them and make sure their lives will not be in vain. No. And so another key element of this is this concept that the others are trying to conquer and destroy us. So you see this used in Italy a lot, and then you'll really see it in another country called Germany. But this goes back to the German mythology too, that we are somehow a superior race, and others are trying to infiltrate our race, to destroy it, weaken our race. And so that a lot of them and the others, and don't forget, this was the most racist on the world history. Remember the US did that. Strict immigration law in 1924. We had better roads here. I mean, this is a worldwide phenomenon. And so here it says, good blood doesn't lie. Sounds very social Darwinistic and kind of scary, doesn't it? And then here are two ones of Italy. And, you know, it's vaguely Asian or African. You can't really tell, right? But it's, you know, it's horrible caricature. And it's, we must defend. Italy, because what I see is happening, Italy being raped. Here, 
This is anti-American. Same deal. But it's also used for racial elements. Okay, if you look, I, I, there's a lot of this about Nazi Germany having something very similar. But Italy, same thing. Also, this concept in, remember the fossil, you know, the, the sticks, the rods all together, it's weak. It's like people, one individual who only cares about yourself and your rights. It can be easily manipulated, you're weak. So the mass will. And so you have all these rallies here in front of the Royal Palace in Rome and these mass rallies. And you see mass rallies where the individual, there's no individual, it's, part of it. it's just the mass. And up front, it's Mussolini. And here you see one for all, all for El Duce, the leader. All together. And so they would do a lot of mass things. And you see a similar thing in every authoritarian state or any kind of authoritarian like political parties all over the world to this day. And also this concept of the corporate state. And the corporate state is like we're all shareholders in the state. And the state is more important than the individual. He talked about this. This is an Afro corporate state. And it's the merger of state and corporate power. Do you see why the Wall Street? push happened and they admired Mussolini. And so what do we get out of this? They're intensely anti-capitalist, but they're pro-monopoly. Why do they hate capitalism? Self-interest in the market makes you weak. There should only be a few powerful companies that control the market. So they're pro-monopoly. And so they'll berate capitalism and berate the greed that comes from this and then turn around and be pro monopoly. And you might say, with good cause, wait a minute, doesn't, isn't that inconsistent? So, the leader decides. That is why the, they funded the block shirts, the very long. And they're also pro finance, money, making money, stock market, financial interests would support them, partially because. They're not communists. And they're intensely anti. He broke up the labor unions. One of the big reasons why the Wall Street push happened. Unions get higher wages and benefits. In fact, I was just reading about, literally just reading about uh, the 49 when they put national health care insurance, another attempt. Uh, it failed and unions started negotiating for workers to, play, to uh, provide health care. I was just reading about that last night. I know what you're thinking. Wow, you read exciting stuff. But, and then the leader principle. El Duce, I love this, all with spades and by we're gonna work and make Italy great. El Duce means the leader. In Spain, the fascist dictator Franco, who died in 76, Franco, he was El Supremo. And what was Hitler? What title did he give himself? Which is the leader. It's ironic that somebody who was the exact opposite idea, and that, but I mean, you believe, in fact, he's like the, of the Democrats, Democrat as, as a democracy, which is like the choice of what he called the boss. <laughs> but it's solid. Who was an authoritarian? But that's kind of funny. But lots of him leading and in charge. And there'll be posters of, in fact, there'll be literally a cult of the leader. His poster be everywhere, his picture to be in newsreels, to be in film, the leader. So you see this in every authoritarian state. And so if you went to uh, an authoritarian state like us, Iraq, I don't know what you call Iraq now, but back then it was definitely an authoritarian state, and they're signing the picture of the I'm saying. This cult of the leader. The leader can do no wrong. And one more important thing. Then positions in government, those who run government, and the military, because military is part of government. It's based on loyalty to the leader. It's loyalty to the leader. Everyone got that. So government positions are based on loyalty to the leader. Not loyalty to the state, loyalty to the leader. The leader represents the state. And so 
Lots of manly pictures. By the way, does this remind you of any Dick Taylor today? Me? Putin, yeah. This is Putin. I mean, this is the same thing. Manliness, doing manly things. Oh, and so this is a building in Milan. And it, it got, the, it, it was blown up after the war, but this is the fascist headquarters. <laughs> that's Mussolini's face. And I, I gotta say, that's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Or is yeah. like pitch? No, it's coming out. It, that's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and you feel comforted by those leaders' projects. Thank you. Uh -huh. Do you want us to put a giant in your face on the side of the pool? Well, that would be different. But I do have a partridge hall. So, and of course, fencing. So, athletic things. And he was, you know, he you know, speaks five languages. He was this kind of, he portrayed this dashing figure. Yes, he. Uh, by the time you get to World War II, he'd be considered a buffoon, but up until the mid-30s, he was considered quite dashing. Now, I know what you're thinking. We now have film. We are going to watch the greatest thing ever put on film. Ever. It will change your life. It will be a blustering Mussolini and then the power of fascism. Are you ready? Ed Polar. Satisfied with their place in the world, were given the same assurances by their new leader, Benito Mussolini, Is that right? who promised them a new Roman Empire. Fascist. Millions of Italians rejoiced in Italy's newfound pride and productivity, the seeming miracle of fascism. Then in 1935, satisfied with their place in the world, were given the same assurances by their new leader, Benito Mussolini, who promised them a new Roman Empire. Millions of Italians rejoiced in Italy's newfound pride and productivity, the seeming miracle of fascism. I see, yeah, I, I see Mussolini there, and I, I can't help it. I think, what a buffoon. It's amazing how many people are like, yeah, he's, that's a leader. <laughs> that is a leader. And so, we get to totalitarianism. And totalitarianism would be then the form of government he was creating. Now, he never achieved it, but he laid out the most authoritarian state of them all, a one-party state. And I should add, does anybody know, this was from the illustrations of a book that came out after World War II about the fear of totalitarianism, written by a socialist who feared was Furious at the totalitarianism of Stalin, but also fascism. Written by a socialist, went by the pen name George Orwell, book 1984, which is a fantastic book. Has anyone read it? Is it Animal? Animal Farm the Devil. Oh. Written by the same guy, who, I don't know if you're a totalitarian. <laughs> 1984 is good. 1984 is a lot. Very British. So, you know, it's a very British thing. But one party control. And then the Big Brother one. That's when the original illustration, that one always scares me. Big Brother's still up there. Someone put a picture of Calhoun. And behind one of these. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Big Brother used to be up here. And yeah, they put that very picture. And then so someone tried to put it with my face in it, and that, you know. <laughs> I want to be more anonymous in my one party control. But this is complete political, economic, and social. So the idea is the state will control your daily life, how you make a living, and your choices will be made by the state, and therefore the leader. And the party will do it for the leader. The problem is, this is incredibly difficult to do. Dictatorships try to take control, but dictatorships. If they take too much control, get overthrown, and they get strung up. How do you maintain this type of state? So Mussolini, taking the term total from World War I, total war, would come up with this. Have your state in a perpetual state of total war. <laughs> Where once you have an enemy, <coughs> you drink. Once you have an enemy, 
Ooh. This is a very good mask, and it's pretty a mask will very easy to talk out of, but still it's so amazing. You talk about a mask. A new out face. Back to mirroring eyes. The other thing about it is, is I'm walking through the hall. It, it's really hard to recognize people. Have you noticed that? I miss seeing faces. I'm hoping we can go on forever like this. <laughs> then we'll let down. Back to this. You keep your, state, uh, your country in a state of total war. So you come up with an enemy. An enemy that could be anywhere. Not just an outside enemy, but an enemy within. And that is why communism was the perfect enemy. Because you have the massive state, the Soviet Union, there's their flag, or what does a communist look like? Anyone. It could be anyone. And therefore, we have an enemy within. So we cannot allow dissent. Remember that whole thing about total war with the US? What was the law of the United States passed that banned freedom of speech as a context of the war? Remember the espionage act? You keep that going because there is an enemy within. We cannot allow that enemy to weaken us. And if we go off doing our own thing, like having right to be individuals, they will scoop us up. But we have a democracy, they're smarter than us. Remember, we believe in social Darwinism. So these intelligent people will come in and take over. By the way, there's a dichotomy there. They imply they're intelligent and brilliant, and if we're weak even for a second, if you don't follow me for a second, they'll win. At the same time, they're endure and they're beast. They're going to corrupt our blood. How do you deal with that contradiction? You don't. You don't care. Hey, what's the only truth? And who represents the state? Okay. <laughs> so with that, no dissent. So the Soviet Union was perfect. And by the way, how did Stalin create an authoritarian state? Who was his enemy? The fascists. They're all fascists. After World War II, when the Cold War began, the US was just disguising their fascism. So, propaganda everywhere. And then, how do you find out? How do you root people out? A secret police. If anybody speaks out against the state, you have spies everywhere. Everywhere. It could be microphones, but the best spies are no. classmates, workmates, your children. I mean, if you're taught in school, a little kid, you got to root out comedy. If your kid goes home, I got some parents. And by the way, let's say I'm a teacher and I say, oh, maybe the Soviet Union is not as big a threat as, as they say. We should talk to you. What's uh, going to happen? Fire. And so one of you rats will go tell on you, right? Which one? <laughs> and what will happen to you? You get a reward. Maybe an armband with a symbol on it. <laughs> Somebody just got told on him. And, and so the next teacher, and if they say anything, what's going to happen? There'll be a race to go snitch on. Totalitarian states reward snitches. They reward them. So family members who tell on their, their family members. And by the way, what a great way to get rid of somebody you want. You don't want them. You don't want to do that DBQ? Archer's just a communist. <laughs> and so who's fine on? And if there's no law, what will get you in trouble? Could be anything, right? So what do you do? You do what you think Big Brother wants. And you always act like there's somebody watching you. You always assume they know something. And everybody you look at with distrust. Sounds like a pretty fun place, doesn't it? <laughs> ah, what happens if you are caught? So what happened to me? Terror. Torture. The threat of terror. Sent to prisons. So a big prison was simply known as a concentration camp. That came from the, remember the Spanish policy in Cuba. That was just the big camp. But 
authoritarian state, authoritarian states would use the uh, unlimited prison and hell holds for torture, concentration camps, for political prisoners to be sent to the concentration camps in Germany. For, at least until, until World War II began, for all four political prisoners. And there would, they would be sent and they would be tortured. And what about their family? Probably not too. What about their neighbors? It's a good chance. In fact, neighbors, if I went away, my neighbors would be like, never heard of them. I don't like them. Mussolini did not have the stomach for the terror. He talked a good show or bad show, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a good show about terror and torture. Mussolini talked a good show, but he didn't do it. Who did it? Stalin. Stalin did it. And of course, Hitler. And I should add, if you take this to the next step, once Germany started conquering areas with large numbers of potential enemies, in 40, not 39, 40, 41, well, 39, 41, and 42, especially, what did that begin? That's where the final solution comes. Where you take that to where they conquered the areas of the biggest population of Jews in the world at that time, Poland and Russia. And that's when the final solution began. That's a stepping stone to total war. That didn't happen until 42. 12, 39 in a way, but. So let's get to Germany. So Mussolini is in power. Most of the time lost her, even though he's still a horrible dictator. It's almost he became such a joke during World War II, it's almost like, ha ah, ha, Mussolini. No, he was still horrible. Mussolini's in your No. By the way, he, you know what happened to him in April of 45? That's what happened to the dictator. Strung out by his own people. And then become, uh, he'd be found on any part of the time for a he and his mistress. Yeah, he but after World War One, let's get to Germany. After World War One, there's civil war in Germany, and these colored cities show where all the food rights, everything happened after, uh, with the time um, right before and after the armistice. So Germany erupted, and there's both left wing and right wing. There's both communist and militaristic right wing rebellions. But one important thing to get is when these rebellions were just about ready to start. There's a myth going on. These soldiers coming back from the front, and the myth is that Germany never really lost the war. That German soldiers weren't defeated. You see these German soldiers coming back in good order? No, they were. Germany was defeated in World War I. They lost. Okay, they beat the Russians, but they lost to the Western Allies. But there's a myth that they could have won, but something stopped them. And who stopped them? Since it wasn't the enemies, who stopped them? Somebody within Germany. It could have been leaders, it could have been workers, it could have been socialists, who knows? Were traitors within Germany. And why that's important is we just had this whole thing about totalitarianism and we'll look out for dissent. There's already a growing view in the many, amongst many Germans, that there was a traitor within. By the way, that's a sure way to destroy a country. When you have some people believing that uh, other people are traitors just by, no, we don't, we don't agree with. It. So you don't need to write down this. Spartacus was the communist revolt in in uh, Berlin. The cap push was the right wing revolt. So to get the point, happened both 1818, 1819, crazy time. But during this civil war. A militia of former soldiers, remember how the Treaty of Versailles got rid of the, most of the German army? They came along with their uniforms, their helmets, their weapons, and they formed these militias. Now, they were called Freikorps or Free Corps, essentially just saying they weren't part of the German army. And they put down both rebellions, Hitler fought in both. So here are Free Corps, and they're just German soldiers. Now, they could not have the Maltese cross. This militia. Here's the Maltese cross. You've seen this before, right? Absolutely. And so 
because that's the German army, and they weren't supposed to be in the army anymore. So they started, you see that they put this on here, just a cross. So they still want the cross for Germany. Here's a lot of what's fallen cross. You see that a lot. A lot of diagonal cross, a lot of that. But the free corps aren't representing that, including a big group of free corps around Munich, who fought at first for the communists and then against the communists. Hitler fought on both sides because, hey, they didn't have a job and these guys fought. Gee, I wonder what cross they'll choose for the free corps there. Anybody have any idea? I don't know. It could be any cross. There's no deep meaning why the free corps in around Munich and a few other places chose the swastika, except that it was a different version of the cross. They wanted a cross to represent Germany. But, but a number of right wing parties, most famously the United States National Socialists, would jump on this symbol to appeal to veterans who were in the Free Corps bashing heads, because that's who they wanted. There's no deep meaning to the swastika when it comes to uh, National Socialism. It just, they just very opportunistically chose. Now, later on, Nazi Germany will almost probably create a cult around the this mystical figure of ancient Germany. Not so much. Does everyone got that? By the way, if you watch any show, the, the British are obsessed with this. So there's all kinds of documentaries about him, Nazi cultism and stuff like that. Britain's obsessed with Nazi Germany. You know, if you, any World War II documentary, I was a British guy narrating. There's a reason. Yes. Isn't that like they have I mean, they have an element of this in like Raiders of the Lost Ark and things like that. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know, I don't know about the superhero. But it probably you know, it's like a, it is such a well known you know myth. Right. So Let's get to this really quick. Germany would, out of the ashes of civil war, form a republic. Now, after the war, you know, in the eventually be called the Weimar Republic. Berlin was in civil war, so they met this pretty little town called Weimar town in Germany. It's actually a really pretty town. It's one of the few German towns that was not destroyed by bombing in World War II. So it's a really neat place. And it's really close to Berlin. I've been there, and it was just kind of a uh, I thought it'd be really neat. It sounds neat, but not much else to see. And they, this is celebrating new constitution. And when I think of new constitution, I think of being on tall unicycles. By the way, this is on the Ingrid and Linden. And in 2007, when I was visiting, my wife and I went to go visit her sister, her husband, Berlin. Just happened to work out that the 2007 World Cup was going on in Berlin. And you don't know what fans are. You have no idea. You think I know what a fan of the sport is for you guys. I thought I do. No, I didn't. On this street, not far from this spot, I got roped into a crowd of at least 5,000 Dutch soccer fans. <laughs> Who, by the way, loved me. Okay. You know why? Because I was wearing an orange shirt. <laughs> and they thought I was the cool. You're an American to like Dutch soccer? And I'm like, I'm no dummy. Yeah. <laughs> you huh? I would say normally the Dutch are very nice, but uh, they might not have accepted that. <laughs> and by the way, I was I was uh, relatively short too. Dutch are tall. Daisy, let me know if I don't grade it on. on, on I thought I graded yours, but just check it. Yeah, yes, just let me know. Everyone have a good day. And Isaac, just as soon as you can get to me. So, the Senate is turning in person in the world. Really? Well, I knew that. I would prefer. Oh, no, we're not proud of some picture. Let's not forget. I think I meant this was all today. Okay. Yeah, so just as long as it's today, you're fine. 
I got it. I can tell you. I know. I was just playing But I will check it. Thank you for letting me know. Hair. Mussolini does not look right with hair. You're doing the posture. You can Huh? Yeah, it's super good posture. Hey, you're gonna be a good day, kid. You know how to, you have to know how to strut. 